Recently, there's been some really worrying news about the decline of insect populations around the world. What can be done about this? In October 2017, the results of a 25-year study were in a German nature reserve were published. Really worrying. 76% loss of flying insects. For people my age, I'm 65. If you think about this, it makes kind of awful sense because when we were kids, were driving with our parents, um, they would have to stop every so often quite regularly to wipe the windscreen of all the squashed buds, bugs on it. And th th this just doesn't happen anymore. And the problem is we're losing pollinators. One third of all the food plants that we eat need pollination. Every flower needs a, a, a pollinator. And you wonder why this isn't more newsworthy, deemed more newsworthy than it is. In January, another worrying study in Puerto Rico, this time in the rainforest, and the scientists who found this particular spectacular decline in insects blame global warming because many tropical insects are vulnerable to the heat extremes that are being observed. Um, and there are knock-on effects, of course, in um, other animals higher up the food chains. Then, just a few days ago, um, Australian and China, Chinese scientists pu published the result of a review of the 73 studies around the world, really worrying decline rate of 2.5 degrees per year. And, and this is heading towards real collapse unless we do something about it. And we can do something about it because so much of the stress on insects is being driven by industrial agriculture. And this is part of a world food system which is broken according to 130 of the world's national academies of science and medicine and we can't even feed the people we have on the planet now with it and we're producing a third of all greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture clearly radical changes needed and it it's possible it's eminently possible for example an international commission just recently concluded that actually we could sustain a global population of 10 billion people with healthy diets if we radically change the way global agricultural uh, systems work and that would save millions of lives, be consistent with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and attack the world's leading cause of poor health, which is bad diets. So um, the responses, I think, are beginning to emerge. Uh, just today, there, there was um, a, an article on um, the response of scientists, environmentalists and politicians saying, basically, it's not that difficult. We have to end intensive farming. We have to go organic. We have to slash pesticide use. This is what would give us a chance of surviving this. And of course, the climate change connection also um, is eminently doable. Whatever we do on the planet, um, we for infrastructure going forward, by 2030, we would have to invest around 90 trillion. If we're stupid enough to do it with fossil fuels, um, then uh, we miss out on $26 trillion in direct economic gain that we would get if we did it in clean ways and shot for uh, zero emissions uh, beyond 2030. Um, and more than $2 trillion of those would come in um, economic gains in agriculture and forest management. So there are three basic conclusions in this whistle stop tour. It costs much less to save the planet than to continue destroying it. We just have to stand up to the people who are wittingly or otherwise destroying the planet. Um, by backing out of industrial agriculture, we, of course, cut greenhouse gas emissions deeply, which we have to do to head off the existential threat of climate change. And we also stand a chance of reversing the catastrophic loss of insects that are beginning to be observed. Um, and by doing these blindingly obvious things, we open up many other opportunities for social and economic gains, not to say, of course, the survival of our own species. So there's a lot more on my website. And thank you very much for your attention.